Hey guys, long time no see. Sorry about the long pause between videos. Um, last time I posted a video, I was just starting a new job, so I was getting thrown in things, trying to get situated, trying to learn all the stuff. Now that I'm kind of situated with it, I came back and wanted to start posting videos again. So I would like to do this as a regular thing where maybe I could post one video a week starting off try to post some deck tech, some decks that I have, maybe stuff for new commanders. Um, I'm gonna make a couple videos this week for newer commanders that I'm building around. But to start, I wanted to revisit one of the decks I built over the time I was playing for a few months when I first started deck techs, but I haven't done a video on and I haven't, um, I haven't, uh, had in a while I tore this deck apart but I wanted to explain kind of why I tore it apart what I think of the commander and the deck in its own right <clears throat> so the commander is Denald Harold Denal, Harold of Wings is two colorless two blue human wizard three three then whenever you cast a non-legendary creature spell with flying you get a copy of it except it's a one one spirit in addition to its other types do this only once each turn so the thing I really liked about this is you get to play a lot of good generic uh, non-legendary flyers, so you can get copies of them, which plenty of them have really good ETBs and different stuff that you could abuse around that. Not to mention they come in as spirits. There is spirit tribal type stuff that you can do. Um, the reason I end up tearing the deck apart is my playgroup has gone up in power level, and the do this only once each turn does hinder this a little bit. So I'll explain kind of the cards I liked um, and explain all that stuff. But in terms of power level, the deck can only physically go so high because of you being able to only do it once each turn. Um, you could play plenty of really good flyers, do some really broken stuff, and have a lot of fun with it. It's just with my power level in our play group, I wasn't able to play it. Um, but I did play this quite a few times at my local game store and had a ton of fun with it. <clears throat> So that's the basic strategy. It's mono blue, so it's just typical stuff around that. This is some of the things that we're going to be running. So <clears throat> I ran Ancient Silver Dragon, 6 colorless, 2 blue, Elder Dragon, 8-8. Eight, eight. It's a flyer that whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you roll a d20. Draw cards equal to the result. You have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. Um, this is basically in there because it's an 8-8 eight, eight flyer. The thing is, is that you don't really need stuff like this in the deck, and I think that was part of what I wanted to change about it. Um, so for instance, you'll see things like Archetype of Imagination, which is a six drop, Consecrated Sphinx is a, sink, a six drop, Astral Dragon's an eight drop, that this does a little bit less overall for your game plan than them. So this is one of the ones that I would cut if I was going to rebuild the deck, which as you can see, it was eight sixteen at the end. Um, but the price could definitely be brought down by cutting cards like this. When it comes to other cards that did a lot more in the deck, Archetype Imagination, 6 colorless, 2 blue, Human Wizard. It's an enchantment creature, 3-2, but it makes it so all of your creatures have flying, and creatures your opponents control lose flying and can't have or gain flying. So this is going to make it so every creature that you have is able to swing in and deal damage. Not to mention that if this is your first spell per turn, you get two of them. So it's pretty good. Uh, Astral Dragon, 6 colorless, 2 blue, flying, 4-4. Four, four. When it enters, you create two tokens that are copies of non-target or target non-creature permanent, except your three three dragons in addition to their type, and they have flying. So the thing with this is if this is your first spell per turn, you get to cast this, you get a second copy of it. So you get four target non-creature permanents, which you can have enter as whatever you want that's a non-creature permanent on anybody's battlefield. So if your opponents are playing really good things, or if you just have really nice flyers, you can go ahead and make these copies of those. Um, getting six bodies out of this is pretty nuts. Um, so there's a lot that you can do with this card. That's what I mean in terms of Ancient Silver Dragon and Astral Dragon. Astral Dragon is also a combo piece with a couple cards, but I don't run them in here. Um, but it wouldn't be hard to add them and be able to run the deck that way. <clears throat> Consecrated Sphinx, six colorless, two blue, Sphinx, four, six, flying. Whenever an opponent draws a card, you may draw two. This is just a unit in the deck to be able to draw through and get a bunch of stuff out. Uh, Curiosity Crafter, three colorless, one blue. Flying Bird Wizard, three, three. 
You have no maximum hand size whenever a creature token deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. All the spirits that you create off of your commander are going to be tokens, so it's just ensuring that you're going to have plenty of cards in your hand to be able to do stuff. Defiler of Dreams, three colorless, two blues. Uh, Phyrexian Sphinx, it's a 4-3 flyer that you can pay two life instead of a blue pip if you want to. Um, and if you do, whenever or whether you do or not, it doesn't really matter. Whenever you cast a blue permanent spell, draw a card. So you want to have plenty of card draw because you want to be able to get to the bigger pieces, make sure you're hitting your land drops and doing the stuff that you need to. <clears throat> Which I'll go over some of the additional stuff, of course. Uh, Ethereal Investigator, three colorless, one blue uh, spirit, flying two, three. When it ETBs, investigate X for X number of opponents you have. Usually it's going to be three. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a one, one white spirit creature token with flying. This is going to be something that's easily achievable. We're always drawing our second card and plenty of other ones. So this is just a really good card in the deck. Uh, Fairy Vandal, one blue. Uh, flash Flying, Fairy Rogue, 1-2. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Fairy Vandal. It's easy to draw additional cards, especially on your turn. But the big thing with this is I do have quite a few Flash creatures and some stuff that give Flash because being able to play this on an opponent's turn means that you're going to be able to get an additional Flyer out. And that's one of the big things about this is it's only going to trigger once per turn. So the way to make this deck better is being able to do it on other people's turns so that way you can get copies of those creatures at other times. I also tried to add a lot of stuff like Glen, Alondra, Archmage, three colorless, bleh, three colorless, one blue, flying, two, two, fairy wizard. That you could pay a blue, sack it, counter target non-creature spell, and it has persist. So having creatures that can counter spells built into them make it a little bit easier because when you go to do this, you're going to get two of these. And the original is going to come back with a negative one counter on it, giving you three counter spells out of one body, which is very versatile. Uh, Guardian of Tazim, three colorless, two blue. It's a Sphinx, four, five flying. It has landfall. So if land enters battlefield, you get to tap a creature and opponent controls. If it's an island, you tap it, and it doesn't untap during their next untap step. So this is really good for being able to shut certain decks down, things like Morrowind. You're able to make sure that they can't tap that Morrowind next turn, giving you that. It also taps down big flyers that you need. And again, if you cast this during your turn, you get a copy of it. So for every island, you'll be tapping down two creatures. Very, very helpful. Uh, Kaiga, the Tide Star, five colorless, one blue, legendary creature, dragon spirit, uh, five, five. Uh, it's just a good flyer. The thing is, whenever you cast a non-legendary, so you're not going to get a copy of this, but it's still a good card to include. You don't have to include it. But I liked it just because my friends in my playgroups play pretty big creatures that are nice to steal. So I figured this would be a pretty decent card to play. Loyal Drake, two colorless, one blue, Drake, two, two flying. And it has a lieutenant, so as long as you control your commander, being a combat, you get a draw card. If you have two copies of it, draw two cards. Mist Raven, two colorless, two blue. It's a bird, two, two flying. When it ETBs, return a creature to its owner's hand. So... This is able to return one or two creatures. It also allows you to return one of your own creatures to your hand, um, which can be helpful if you want to cast something in the future and get an additional copy of it, things like an Astral Dragon. Um, it's going to be very nice to have more Astral Dragons coming in. Uh, Maul Drifter, four colors, one blue, flying two, two elemental. When it ETBs, draw two, but it has Invoke, so you can cast it for its Invoke cost. Um, when they enter, you're still going to get that copy of it. So basically, you're going to be drawing four cards for three mana, which is pretty good. Uh, Nim Nimbus of Frost, two colorless, two blue, spirit, three, three flying. It has Prowess, which is it's slightly helpful in this deck. We do run quite a bit of sorceries and stuff like that in instance. So there's things you could do with it. But it's mostly in there because whenever you cast instant or sorcery, tap a creature, it doesn't untap. So this allows you to kind of slow down your opponents and tap their boards down quite a bit. Uh... Orniophage, I believe is how you pronounce it that. It, pronounce that, not pronunciate. Uh, three colorless, one blue, flying, squid illusion, one, two. Whenever you draw a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Um, just in general, it's one of my favorite cards. Um, it's a squid illusion. It's cool looking. I like it. Um, not to mention that you draw plenty of cards, so this thing is going to get very big and very out of control. Uh, Ornithopter of Paradise, two colorless. It's uh, Thopter, zero, two, flying. It's a monodork. 
It's good because if you need the additional mana, you can play it early to try and ramp into the things you need to get out later. Or if you draw it before you play your commander, you have a mana dork. <clears throat> Rug of Smothering, three colorless artifact creature. It's a construct, one three flying. Whenever a player casts a spell, they lose one life for each spell they've cast this turn. This is one of those cards that's high risk, high reward. It's very good for shutting down storm decks, but you have to make sure that you're watching out because it's also going to hurt you when you play your spells. Plus, if there's a copy of it, it's going to go two life, four life, six life, and so on. Um, can really shut down a lot of others, but can also hurt you. Uh, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. When it, uh, it's a human rogue, three colors, one blue, three one. When it enters, it comes a copy of another permanent. It loses the legendary rule, so... This is in here to copy your commander so that you can get three copies of creatures. Um, Scholar of the Lost Trove, five colorless, two blue sphinx. When uh, five five flying, when it enters the battlefield, you may cast an instant sorcery or artifact card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. So if you're playing this while your commander's out, you can get two of those or you can get three of those, which is really nice. Uh, Siren Storm Tamer, one blue flying uh, Siren Pirate Wizard. 1-1, one, one, that you pay a blue, and you could sack it, counter-target spell, or ability that targets you or a creature you control. So just good protection on a creature again. <clears throat> Skyway Robber, 3 colorless, 1 blue. It's a bird rogue, 3-3 three, three flying. It can be escaped for 5 cards, 3 colorless, 1 blue. And when it escapes, uh, it has, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may cast an artifact, instant, or sorcery card from among the cards exiled with him without paying its mana cost. So just a nice little recursion, a little way to get some good stuff out, not to mention that if you have a copy of it, it's going to help out quite a bit. Um, Soul Blade Dajin's three colorless, two blue. It's a flyer that whenever you cast a non-creature spell, gives all your creatures plus one, plus one. Um, some stuff like this is very helpful in the deck because you're going to need to be able to get in for big damage. So having things like this and Windstorm Drake just give little buffs to your entire team. Uh, where are we? Oh. Sower of Temptation, 2 colorless, 2 blue, Fairy Wizard, Flying 2-2. Two, two. Then when it enters the battlefield, you gain control of a creature as long as you control Sower. So this is nice because if you play it, you get to steal two creatures. It's just a good card to have. Uh, Spectral Arcanist, three colorless, one blue spirit wizard flying three two. They were ETBs. You can cast an instant sorcery from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. It, the mana cost has to be less than or equal to the number of spirits you control. So, all the copies that you have with your commander are going to be spirits. Not to mention, just playing this alone is going to copy it, which is going to give you at least two uh, spirits that you'll be able to cast those from the graveyard, which you'll see we have some decent instant sorceries that would be able to help out. Sphinx of the Clear Skies, three colorless, two blue. Sphinx, flying, ward two, five, five, that has domain. Um, the thing with domain in this deck is it's always going to be one, but you're going to choose a pile of cards out of one and choose one to go to your hand, one to go to the graveyard. So if you have both this and you have a copy of it, it's basically draw two that they get to see the card at. Uh, Spike Tail, Drakeling, one colorless, two blue, Drake, two, two flying. You could sack it to counter a spell unless its owner pays two. Spirit Noble, one colorless, two blue, Fairy, two, two. It's flying, and other creatures you control with flying get plus zero, plus one. If you tap Spirit Noble, all creatures with flying get plus one, plus zero until the end of turn. So again, a nice little buff. Um, if you want to, you can get a copy of it. Gives you a nice two buff attack if you have this in a copy of it. <clears throat> Storm type Leviathan. It's the only fly, uh, non flyer that we play in the deck. It's five colorless, three blue. Island walk, uh, Leviathan 8 8. All lands are islands in addition to their types. Creatures without flying or island walk can't attack. So the reason this is in here is because of the archetype. You make everything else lose flying, and then you give all of your stuff flying, of course, because most of it has flying anyway but they won't be able to attack unless they have flying. So if nobody could get rid of one of those pieces, they can never attack you. Now, Thieving Skydiver, one colorless, one blue, Merfolk Rogue, two, one, Kicker X, and has flying. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, you gain control of an artifact with converted mana cost X or less. If it's an equipment, you get to attach it for free. Um, when you pay the X, you get a copy of that as the kicker. So if you play this on your turn, 
Worst case scenario, you can pay one into it and steal two soul rings if you want. You could steal some equipments that are out. There's a lot of really good stuff that you can steal with this, and as long as you're casting it for your first flyer for a turn, you get to steal two things with it, which can be very helpful. And it is not just as long as you control, it's you just steal them. So, very helpful. Uh, Tide Skimmer, three colorless, one blue, flying, two, three, Drake. Whenever you attack with two or more creatures flying, you just get a draw card. Villainous Click. One colorless, two blue, fairy wizard, flash flying, three one. When it enters, you get to look at a player's hand, choose a non-land card from it. If you do, that player reveals the chosen card, puts it on the bottom of their library, and then draws a card. So this is nice to just be able to remove a piece that you know somebody has in their hand, especially with flash, you're able to get around it. Maybe if you know that they're going to tutor for another piece to their combo that they need, you can always look at their hand and get rid of the other card that's in their hand that you know is that combo piece, forcing them to figure out what they're going to do at that point. <clears throat> uh, Warden of Evos Isle, two colorless, one blue. Bird, wizard, two, two, flying. Makes it so flying spells cost one less. Uh, if you can copy it with your commander, it's two less. Pretty good card. Warkite Marauder. It's a one colorless, one blue human pirate flying 2-1. Personally, one of my favorite cards in the deck because whenever he attacks, target creature defending player controls loses all abilities and has base power and toughness 0-1 until the end of turn. So this is really good for getting rid of those pesky guys that are up there, the big guys with reach that are block or stopping you from being able to get in there, or just big flyers like Corvold that are threatening you not being able to attack them. You can get rid of all their abilities. So it's a really good card, really useful and versatile card. Uh, Wind Reader Sphinx, five colorless, two blue, Sphinx flying, three, seven. Whenever a creature with flying attacks, you may draw a card. And Windstorm Drake, four colorless, one blue, Drake flying, three, three. Other creatures with flying get plus one, plus zero. So I haven't updated this card in a few, or this deck in a few months. Not to mention that some of these cards, like Ancient Silver Dragon, were given to me by friends, so I threw them in here. There's definitely some things that you could do with the creature section, but that's kind of the cool thing about playing this commander, is all it cares about is creature spells with flying. So as long as you put in your favorite flying creatures in here, your little control creatures that do things that you like, um, I know there's some that bounce lands back to hand and other things like that, you're going to have a lot of fun being able to create copies of them. The big thing, though, as you noticed, is there's not a ton of flash creatures in here. Um, there wasn't a ton, I thought, of very good and versatile ones, but you'll see that I ran things down here. Um, where they at? Vidalcan Ori and Leyline of Anticipation that allow you to cast spells at any time, allowing you to really take advantage of the fact that you're going to have a good amount of blue mana and a lot of weenie flyers that you can really flood out and do stuff with. So, going back up here, uh, sorceries, pretty straightforward. Ponders, one blue, look at the top three, put them back in any order. You may shuffle, draw a card. Preordain, one blue, you're going to scry two, then draw. Uh, Sakashima's Will, really good card in this deck, and actually a pretty good win con in some blue decks. Uh, if you control your commander, you get to choose both. If not, you can only choose one. You choose an opponent, and they give you a creature, you gain control of it. Doesn't usually matter. Um, they're not really going to give you anything too crazy. Normally they give you some weenie or some small guy that you, they don't care about. But the big thing is, is choose a creature you control. Each other creature you control becomes a copy of that creature until the end of turn. So now all of a sudden that, uh, those big creatures like Consecrated Sphinx, it's a 4-6. Um, archetype, not Archetype, uh, where was the other guy? Uh, Ancient Dragon, he's an 8-8. Eight, eight. Uh, some of those guys like this, a 5-5, five, five, that's going to help you you're going to be able to turn all your weenie tokens that are only 1-1s one into big 5-5 five five beaters, and you're probably going to end the game there. Uh, Spectral Deluge, 4 colorless, 2 blue, turn creatures to their opponent's cans with toughness X or less. Yeah, return each creature your opponent's control with toughness X or less to their hands, where X is the number of islands you control. Uh, you're drawing cards, plenty of cards every single turn, so being able to ensure that you're going to have a good amount of islands is reasonable. The card can also be foretold, which can make it even cheaper than it's supposed to be. Um, it's a good card. It's a good board wipe type thing. <clears throat> Instance. Some of these are copied cards, and I proxied over from Cormella, my main deck. So the thing is, is that Mana Drain, things like Fierce Guardianship, could definitely be cut if you want to lower the price. And really, they're not necessary in the deck. 
uh, but I'll run through them pretty briefly. Chain of Vapor, you get to return an all-land permanent to its owner's hand. They can sack a land and do the same and copy it. Uh, counter spell, two blue, counter target spell. <clears throat> Dig through time, six colorless, two blue. It has delve, so you can remove cards from your graveyard to pay for the colorless casting cost of it. You get to look at the top seven, put two in your hand, rest the bottom library in a random order. Fierce, if you control your commander, it's free. Counter target non-creature spell. Uh, frantic search, two colorless, one blue. Draw two, discard two, untap three lands. High tide, one blue. All of your islands are going to tap for an additional blue for, until the end of turn. So this just really helps you ramp out some of that good stuff early on that you need. Get your commander out a turn earlier or get some of those big guys in your hand that you want out onto the battlefield. Because even though you want to try and copy with your commander, there's still the point where if you flood the board with every flyer you own, you're going to be in a pretty good position to win. Especially if you could do it at flash speed, which as you I just showed you not too long ago, you can do. <clears throat> Monitoring, you counter a spell and then you get colorless at the beginning of next main phase equal to that spell's converted mana cost. It helps you ramp out a little bit. March of Swirling Mist, X blue. Uh, you can exile blue cards from your hand to make it two colorless less and up to X target creatures phase out. This is nice for protecting your big guys that you need. It's also nice because it just phases out target creatures, so you can phase out creatures on opponents' battlefields that they really need. Misdirection. <clears throat> costs three colorless, two blue, but if you exile a blue card from your hand, you get to pay it for free. You get to redirect a spell with a single target. So this is really good, especially... Um, the big thing I like this for is things like extra turn spells sometimes target players and little things that they're going to do at the last second that they think are going to win them the game and then all of a sudden you get to change that target to someone else can really <clears throat> change everything up for them. Mystical Reflection, one colorless, one blue, or it can be foretold. Uh, choose target non-legendary creature. Next time one or more creatures or planeswalkers would enter the battlefield this turn, they enter as that creature instead. So it's going to help you turn some of those weenie creatures late game into big creatures. And it's also any creature, so you're also able to create copies of other people's creatures, which is really nice. <clears throat> and Resculpt, one colorless, one blue. Uh, exile artifact or creature, they get a 4-4 four, four, uh, blue and red elemental creature token instead. Just a decent removal piece. It gets rid of an artifact or creature. I like to have versatility in my cards most of the time. <clears throat> artifact section, pretty simple. Uh, Arcane Signet is going to give you one mana of blue. Uh, Biden Athasa, two colorless, two blue. Legendary Enchantment Artifact. Creature deals combat damage to a player. Draw a card, or you could pay two. Tap it, and creatures your opponents control attack this turn of Fable. Um, sometimes a lot of those p players like to keep their things back, so being able to s ha make, force them into swinging into a big field of your flyers that you're going to kill their creatures with can help. Uh, Chromox, Monocrypt, and other, other cards that could be cut if you want to reduce the cost of the deck. Chromox, you're going to imprint a card from your hand, and it's going to tap for that color, which is most likely going to be blue. Monocrypt, you tap, gives you two colorless. Upkeep, you have to flip a coin. If you lose, you have to take three damage. Mindstone taps for colorless, or you can sack it to draw a card later. Nyx Lotus, which is pretty good in this deck, enters tapped, but when you tap it, you can choose a color. Add an amount of color equal to your devotion to that, which a lot of the copies are going to have the same, well, all of the copies are going to have the same devotion as the original creatures. So this is going to help you get a ton of blue mana. Uh, <clears throat> Sapphire Medallion, two colorless, makes it so blue spells cost one colorless. Soul Ring... Thought Vessel gives you unlimited hand size. Twinning Staff makes it so you can copy the spells because you're already creating the copies of them with your commander. So maybe you want three of each. This is really going to help out in the deck. And Vidalkanori allows you to cast spells that they had flash. Down at the enchantment section, this is pretty straightforward. Um, favorable winds, creatures you control with flying get plus one, plus one. And Gravitational Shift gives creatures with flying plus two, plus zero. And creatures without flying, negative two, negative zero. It's going to be a big board buff, and it's going to slag people down a little bit. <clears throat> I don't know why I said slag people down. It doesn't even make sense. Uh, Leyline of Anticipation, two colorless, two blue. If it's in your opening hand, you can start the game with it. If not, cast it for four mana. gives all your spells flash. And the phasing of Zulfir Zolf 
is two colorless, two blue. This has read ahead, so you can place it onto which one you would like. So if you wanna place it down for one or two, it's going to just be a nice thing to phase something out for a little bit. And then you could use this on your own things if you want, or you could use it on other people's things. The last one's gonna destroy every creature, and that's gonna give its controller two, two creature for each one destroyed. So pretty good mono blue board wipe. I mean, there isn't really many to be able to use, so being able to have one that is like this is very nice. <clears throat> and then we're down here at the lands. There's really nothing too special to point out here. Um, all of these lands are pretty self-explanatory. The big ones are Nykthos. Nykthos is an amazing land in any mono-colored deck. Um, and I like to run Lonely Sandbar, Remote Isle type things where you're able to cycle them you're gonna be drawing a ton of cards, so if you get flooded with lands, it's nice to just be able to ensure that you're not having your 17th land in your hand you don't need. And Emergence Zone allows you to pay one, tap it, sack it, and you can cast spells as though they had flash. So another way to get that on a pinch that you need it. Again, it's not a CEDH deck. It's not super powerful. It's pretty straightforward. You know what it's gonna do, but if you enjoy playing flyers, if you enjoy getting double of things, this is a really fun deck. Um, I think the reason, like I said, was power level at my play group and the fact that it says do it once each turn. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of the cards that do that because I feel like you could just make the card fair in the first place instead of having to put that down, especially something like this. I don't think this card would be broken if it was more than once each turn, um, but it's a pretty fun deck to play. It's versatile. You know what you're going to be doing, though. I mean, it's going to be whatever blue flyers you like and some colorless ones that are nice in the deck. There's a lot of higher cost ones if you wanted to add in. There's a lot of lower ones if you wanted to just flood the board with as much as you can. But, yeah, I figured I would just share this deck list. I was going through some of my old stuff, so I figured maybe you guys would like to see this. Um, like I said, I'm going to try to make some more videos and try to put out some stuff soon. So keep an eye out for that but I appreciate you guys. I hope you guys have a good day.